Okay, hello, this is Paul Check. Today I thought I would touch on something I've touched on maybe once or twice in the past few years in my blogs. It's a concept I learned from J.R. Telly, Jerry Telly, uh, an exercise scientist that I worked with years ago. He's also a friend of Charles Polican's, and uh, I spent some time with him, and he actually used me as a research guinea pig for a while, uh, looking at length force curvatures and things like that. But what I'd like to share with you is a technique or a concept you can use. Today I'm only going to show the concept with just one exercise. In future videos I might show you other exercises. I have exposed you to this in the past on the deltoid exercise, the shoulder uh, ab lateral raise exercise. Today I'm going to just take it a little further. We're going to look at the biceps and the concept so what we're going to do is look at length force relationships and how we can manipulate the length force curvature to get a deeper level of training which has a high level of applicability to a wide variety of sports, whether it be rock climbing, uh, rugby, football, hockey, any of the combative sports is a good example, but there are many other applications and even just good old plain hard physical work. So the first thing we want to point out here is that when you're doing an exercise like the biceps curl, the maximum load on the biceps or the working muscle is when the forearm's parallel to the floor. That's when you're getting the most gravitational loading. Then as it comes up, I have more of an advantage. As it's going down, well, I have more elastic force in the muscle, so it's, it's a little less challenging. So what we realize here is that right there is where the maximum load on the system is. So naturally that's where the system is going to make itself the strongest because you're dealing with the most load. In other words, doing a standard biceps curl will make you very strong here, but it won't really enhance your strength down here in the beginning or up here at the end. But in many sports and in work environments, you have to be strong in the initiation or close, such as when you're grappling with somebody in uh, martial arts or jujitsu and sports like that. So now just to show you what it looks like, if we take this here and say, okay, well, that's the maximum load. What happens if I lean my body backwards, but I leave my forearm there? Now I'm lengthening the muscle tendon unit. So I'm changing the point in the length force curve where I'm getting maximal strength development. If I go the other way, then now you see that the elbow is being more flexed. So now I'm getting maximum load way up here at the end. So if you're in a grappling situation where you're working tight with someone, you need strength in here, not just in the middle range. So a simple way you can apply this principle is instead of curling the dumbbell, I'm going to switch sides here, it's harder than it looks. Instead of curling the dumbbell like we're so used to, you can leave it there, lean towards it, and slowly lean back and lean towards it and slowly lean back. And so now we're getting a different physiological effect than we would if we just do a standard curl. Now, if we take a Swiss ball, we can go over the ball and start here, and we can work the reps until we start getting to the point where we know we're not going to make it through the sticking point, which is technically the hardest point in any lift, and I'm not going to push myself through that. I've already worked out, so I'm not going to be a He-Man. But what I'll say is now what I would do is, so let's say that I'm having a hard time getting through that sticking point. Then I start leaning back a little bit on the ball. And as soon as I can pull it through, I take it through. Then I hold it up, lean forward, and get the maximum load on the eccentric. Then I pull it through. And when I hit the sticking point, I lean it back just enough to overcome the sticking point hold it there, roll forward to get maximum load on the eccentric, and then I would just switch to the other side and go through the 
same process on the other arm. Now, a, a little warning for you is that you might want to just start off with one or two sets working that to failure, to where you just can't move your arm anymore. But this type of training can make you so sore that you may not be able to comb your hair for a few days. So I prepared for this by just shaving my head. But uh, just know there can be a lot of post-training soreness. And for those of you that are into putting on muscle mass, this is a very, very efficient way to do it, provided you have uh, adequate support with diet, lifestyle, and recovery. Otherwise, it'll be a very good way to induce an injury due to overloading the body to the point that you don't have the resources to recover. So it's a simple technique, and uh, as soon as I get a chance, I will show you techniques for manipulating the length force relationship using a cable machine. Hope you enjoyed this little lesson today. If you play with the concept, you might be able to be creative and come up with some new ideas of your own and share away. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Paul Check. If you want to learn a lot more, there's no better place to start than Check Exercise Coach. It's the probably the only truly holistic exercise advanced training program out there, and the prerequisites alone usually result in a lot of people writing me emails going, oh my God, I had no idea how much there was for me to learn about the core, about the back, and about exercise program design. So thanks for joining me. Look forward to sharing more with you soon. I'm Paul Check.